Hey guys, this week I'm back in Polybridge and I wanted to try making a catapult. So let's get right into it. So I'm starting off this video like I normally do. I'm extending the islands apart to their maximum distance, which is 250 meters. I didn't think I was actually gonna be able to throw out that far, but I thought it was just a good starting point. And I'm adding in a bunch of platforms and fixed joints to put bridge parts on. And finally, you see I have three cars there. Now the hope is that I'm gonna have some sort of semi or fully automatic car catapult launching system where I could keep loading these cars in and keep flinging them. I didn't really have any idea how I was going to do this, but I just decided to start out with the lever arm for the catapult, which is what I have here. It was perfectly balanced, so it just stood straight up and down, which I kind of thought was funny. And here I have in the supporting arm and the spring that connects the two. So I should be able to pull back on the lever arm and just sort of charge up the spring, and then I should be able to let it go and it should fling. So you'll see I'm starting with some hydraulic power to try to pull back the lever arm, but initially I didn't really get anywhere with this when I put it on the bottom. So I moved it up to the top here, and you see you can pull back and charge up the lever arm, but this is where my second problem came into play. And every time I tried to charge this up, it would end up just either snapping the steel or not pulling it back far enough to really get any real energy created. So I tried a few different configurations of both the lever arm and the supporting arm to hopefully make it a bit stronger. And I also added in some more springs. But again, those two problems happened. It was either not strong enough or it just didn't fling the car enough. So I tried a few different spring configurations. You see here I have some diamond springs, which should help to store more energy. And they do, but they also cause the whole thing to snap since they're storing more energy. And finally, this is the best I could get. I had just a single road here and a car on it. And you see the car didn't even move off of the road. So with that, I decided to turn on unbreakable mode just because I thought even if I could get it to work, it wasn't going to be anything impressive. And immediately I switch out the hydraulic to a diamond hydraulic and you see the launch I get is much more impressive. But now that unbreakable mode is off, I can really just do whatever I want. So I extend the lever arm and the supporting arm and add a bunch more springs in. So hopefully I can get a much more powerful launch. So I move the whole thing down a little bit since now it's getting very tall and there's no reason for it to be that high. And just for fun, I decided to connect up a bunch of hydraulics to it and pull it back. Now you can see, first of all, the car falls off and second of all, it doesn't end up letting go. So I had a split joint so when it pulls back all the way, it lets go. And what I did to stop the car from falling out is put a little road in the front. So now when the hydraulics pull all the way back, they can fling the car forwards. And that launch definitely didn't get all the way to the other side. But for how compact this is, it was a pretty decent launch. So the other thing I wanted to focus on now is I always use hydraulics as my power source. Well, I guess not always, but almost always. And I wanted to try something I've never done before, and that's using a custom shape as the power source. Now it's rotating very slowly, so I multiplied the speed by 10. And you can see how that works. And if I connect it up to the lever arm, you see how it pulls back the lever arm, but then as it comes back around, it sort of comes back. Now the custom shape might seem like cheating, but really it does have a limited amount of power and there's definitely a lot to think about with it. And also it's not a movable power source, which works for this application, but for a lot of other things it wouldn't work. But I wanted to try it out and see what would happen. So my first thought was to use a sort of chain system to wrap around the motor, and then as it pulls around, it can sort of pull in the lever arm. Now, what ended up actually happening is these joints just sort of started shaking around a lot, and I didn't even have enough power to pull it in too far. So I added in two more motors and I connected up one of them using a four bar linkage. And it gives me basically double the power on the first motor. And it wraps all the way around actually, and it gets around just far enough that it touches the other motor and ends up getting stuck on it. So I move it further out of the way and also connect up the third motor. And now you can see they all work to wrap around this chain. And this was working great until one of the steel pieces ended up expanding and then pushing itself like a, around the motor. So the chain wasn't really stable, and after quite a few tries to see I put in a bunch more motors there, it ended up just not really being feasible. What I did think would work, though, is just putting in a really big motor like this, and then putting in a single fixed joint on the one side, so as it pulls all the way back, once it rotates 180 degrees, it pulls back the lever arm far enough that it fully charges it. So I have the other motors up there, and I connect them all up with four bar linkages, and then I use some diamond piece to steel to connect up the last motor to the big motor. And you can see when I put the custom shape on the outside, how it wraps all the way around and moves quite a far distance. So I connect it to the lever arm using a single cable now. And you can see as it pulls back, it really charges up the lever. And then it rotates around and of course it uncharges it, if that's a word. So I'm moving one of the cars on top of the lever arm, and I'm putting in a checkpoint for that car. And what it's going to do is when the car hits that checkpoint, it's going to break off the split joint and then throw the car forwards. And you can see here I get a really good launch. Now again, it didn't reach the other side. But for how compact this is, I was actually really surprised it's going to get that kind of power. So now I need some way to be able to load the cars into this thing repeatedly. 
So I move all the platforms up and get them lined up in a nice way. But also, I need some way to be able to control when the lever arm is being pulled back. Because I don't want it being pulled back every single time the motor rotates. Because then it might pull back when I'm trying to load the car into place, which doesn't really work. So to accomplish this, I'm going to use a gear system, and I made two gears right here. So one of the gears is always going to be spinning and it's going to be attached to the motor that I just made. But the other gear, I'm going to be able to selectively mesh with the motor gear to be able to pull back the arm only when I want to. So here I have the one in place and the other one is just rolling. But you can sort of see how they work. So I add a dynamic anchor in the middle, which allows me to move it wherever I want. And I add in a single piece of steel and a hydraulic. And now to give it a test, you can see I can pull back the gear, which stops it from being meshed. And that should allow me to selectively pull back the lever arm whenever I want. So of course I just have to add in the extra motors and connect them with some diamond pieces of steel. And it works okay, but it ends up not having quite enough power to pull back the lever arm. So I just double up the motors, because why not? And after connecting them all with four bar linkages, you can see it just has enough power to pull back the lever arm. So of course, I wasn't happy with it being just powerful enough, so I added four more of these power arms. And also I changed up one thing. Instead of the lever arm being released as soon as the car reaches a checkpoint, I just had it do it once it reaches a specific time delay. And it's just a little bit easier to put in place. This gives me a little bit more fine control. So you can see I can pull back the gear into place and launch the car. But here you see I didn't get the best launch ever, but it was because I think it ran into the platforms. So I just raised up the platforms a bit, and also took the opportunity to put in the elevator system to load cars into the carriage or the catapult, or whatever you're going to call it. So I added a parallelogram linkage and supported it. And you can see how it swings here. But, of course, I don't want it to just fall that quickly. I'm going to need some sort of hydraulic mechanism to slowly let it down and be able to lift back up this thing so another car could get loaded in. So I put in my hydraulic like that, and you can see the car gets loaded in. Now I didn't have this front wall quite sorted out right, so after extending it out a little bit to hold in the car better, you can see how that works. And now it gets pulled back all the way and launches the car. And this was a really good launch, I ended up going about halfway. But you'll notice there's a slight problem when the car gets launched. So I'm pausing the video here, because you see the lever arm ends up falling a little bit forwards into the supporting arm. This would work if we had a single launch, because it wouldn't matter. But if I want to load another car in place, it doesn't work because now the lever arm is in a different spot than it originally was. So I need some way to be able to pull back on this. And for that, I'm using a spring and a cable like this. So if I tell the spring to be fully stretched out, now once it launches the car, it pulls back on the lever arm and it keeps it being upright. And you can see here, it's sort of covered by the level failure screen, but the lever arm is now straight up and down. So now things were looking really close, so I moved in the final island so that the cars weren't just landing in the water. And I also changed out the cable for this steel structure here. Now it doesn't change things too much, but it is going to be important for loading the second and third cars in place. And just as I expected, it still pulls back in the same way and then lets the car fire. So here's where my design seems like it has a problem, but I do have a solution for it. So once it fires, that steel arm you see just falls straight to the ground. So it has to disconnect from the lever arm so that the spring can pull the lever arm forwards and launch the car. So after the first car launches, there's nothing connecting the lever arm to the gear to pull it back and then have it launch. So to fix this, you can see part of it is putting in a ton of these split joints like I am in here. And I'm lowering in a second one of these arms so it can reattach the gear and the lever arm and then be able to be pulled back by the gear again and launch the car once again. So after I put that in place, I need some way to lower it, and for that I'm going to use the same elevator mechanism I did before. I just need to make a parallelogram linkage and then support it. And after I do that, I just need to set a couple split joints so that it's allowed to let go of the arm, and then I need to put in the hydraulic to push it down. So you can see how it gets lowered down. And the top part ends up lining up with the lever arm quite nicely, but the bottom part I actually miscalculated quite a bit and it was off by a lot. So I had to redesign the connection a little bit, but after I did that, you can see it's pretty close to attaching to one of the gear's split joints, and it does attach to the top. So I just need to set a split joint on the bottom, and then mess with staging for quite a bit. And here I was pretty close, I got it to attach to the gear, and you see how the gear ended up stopping, but it didn't attach to the top part. So I redesigned it quite a bit, and mess with staging just a tiny bit too, since it fell down accidentally before. But after getting everything in place, now you can see the second car gets loaded in. And when the gears mesh again, it's able to pull back the lever arm just enough. And the second car hits the island. 
Then for the third car, it's basically just the same mechanism again. So after I basically copy and paste that and then set all the staging. Now for the second car is launched, the elevator lets down the third car and the gear pulls back and it actually manages to launch it. And here's that shot again. It actually goes so far it goes over the island. So I did a few cosmetic things here, like putting in a few pillars, and I prettied up the islands a little bit too, but I didn't change anything mechanically. So guys, thanks for watching. If you want to make the drivers of these cars feel better, make sure to subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to ask below, and otherwise, until next time.